The House Select Committee investigating the deadly Capitol riot is threatening criminal consequences against those who defy subpoenas. It's in response to former Trump adviser Steve Bannon, who said he would not comply with the demand for records and testimony. The committee has subpoenaed several former White House aides in recent weeks. Meantime, President Biden has rejected former President Trump's assertion of executive privilege for requested documents surrounding January 6th. For more, I want to bring in Jessica Levinson. She is a CBS News legal contributor and a professor at Loyola Law School. Hi there, Jessica. So this argument over who has the ability to invoke executive privilege is a bit of a gray area. Walk us through the legality of this debate. Yes, and you've heard me say this before when it comes to some of these issues that have been brought up as a result of the Trump administration, which is we've never been here before, or this is a bit of a gray area. And so we know that executive privilege is not something that's in the Constitution. It's judicially recognized, and we essentially recognize this as something that's important to allow presidents and his senior advisors to be able to have open conversations without thinking that they might at a certain point be subpoenaed by a congressional committee, or there might be issues of national security where you know that you want privacy. But we don't have answers in answer to your question. We've never tackled exactly whether or not a former president can assert it. I think all of the reason behind why we have executive privilege, it makes a lot more sense that it be the person currently in the Oval Office, an elected official, who makes the determination as to whether or not executive privilege, in fact, will be used or will be waived. And in this case, there's a lot of kind of complicated procedural issues about um, whether or not the National Archives now has to hand over information immediately. I think what's going to happen is former President Trump will say, no, I really object. Current President Biden will say, I know, but I'm I'm not buying what you're selling, and the National Archives will turn mm. over this information to the congressional committees. Well, what specific information is the committee hoping to learn from these records and testimony? So I think that it all kind of falls under this umbrella of what did the president know, when did he know it, and what did some of his key advisors, what did some of his former um, advisors know? What they're really looking at, I think, is what he understood with respect to the election, whether or not perhaps he really thought it was stolen, even though it wasn't, and what he thought about this rally. So the information that's being sought, of course, we don't know specifically what will be found. We know it includes videos and photos and tweets and uh, other documentary evidence concerning these issues of an attempt to frankly subvert the election and the planning of this rally, which is starting, of course, to look like an attempted coup. And so that that's the kind of well, basics of what they're looking for. Yeah. As we mentioned, the committee is threatening legal action against those who defy its subpoenas. So what options does Congress actually have? Yes, um, I saw, I'm sorry for talking over you. So Congress has a couple of limited options here. There's a something called inherent contempt. Congress hasn't used that for about 100 years, but it's basically saying to the sergeant of arms, hey, could you go ahead and arrest Steve Bannon or detain him because we subpoenaed him and he didn't mm. respond. I think there, it would be a real uphill battle to try and kind of resurrect that after a century. Uh, the route that the House has said they would take is that they said that the first the panel would vote as to whether or not they want criminal contempt. Then that would go to a vote of the House. And then the House would then basically make a referral to the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice would then, of course, make the determination as to whether or not to go forward with criminal content, contempt. But that's what we have heard the members of the House Select Committee talk about. They've talked about this root of criminal contempt. And of course, a big question is, even if the witnesses don't have the better legal argument, can they basically just run out the clock on this particular committee's charge so that um, they never either show up for deposition or turn over the documents? 
Well, Steve Bannon's attorney says that he is following the direction of the former president's legal team. And Mr. Trump's attorney says the requested documents are, quote, protected from disclosure by the executive and other privileges. Now, Steve Bannon was also not an executive branch employee at the time of the attack. Legally, Jessica, does this argument hold up? No. And, you know, so many things with respect to the law and with respect to this particular issue are gray. But it's really hard to see how Steve Bannon, who had not been a member of the White House for, I believe, about four years when January 6 came around, when the events of January 6 happened, um, could assert executive privilege. I think that this isn't about him thinking that this is correct under the law. It's about him trying to throw the cloak of the president's assertion of executive privilege around himself. And again, I think trying to delay, delay, delay. We've seen this playbook before, and it can be really useful, particularly when this particular committee has said, we want to wrap this up by spring. Everybody knows we're going into the midterms. You don't have to win in court to ultimately win politically. All right, we'll continue to watch it. Jessica Levinson, Jessica, always good to have you. Thank you. Thank you.